In this video, I'll try to make sense out of some of the trigonometric substitution problems in section 7.3, namely number 8, 9, and 10 on the Achieve assignment. Uh, so this first one, whenever we look at it, this should mimic uh, your number 8 in section 7.3. Uh, you're going to have something like the, the integral of dx over the group x squared uh, minus 9 quantity squared. So anytime you see a variable squared minus a constant squared, you're supposed to remember that that is our secant substitution. So anytime it's x squared minus a squared, you let x equal a secant theta. a in this case is 3, so x equals 3 secant theta. Now I need to find out what dx is. Well, derivative of secant is secant tangent, so dx is 3 secant theta tangent theta d theta. Before I like to go back into the integral, I like to figure out what everything inside the integral is. So up here I showed that the x squared minus 9 is nothing more than, in this case it's x squared minus 9 quantity squared. Uh, so I'll go ahead and put a square around that group too. That's going to equal, in this case, well, x squared is going to be 9 secant squared theta minus 9. And then I can say, well, in that inside of that group, I could factor out a 9, and it would be secant squared minus 1. Well, secant squared minus 1 is tangent squared. So the inside is equivalent to 9 tangent squared theta. But now I was squaring that whole group, so I square 9 to get 81. I square tangent squared to get tangent to the fourth. Now I go back to my problem. I already know dx is my numerator, so I replace dx with what it's equal to in terms of theta. And then my group squared, x squared minus 9 to the second, we've already shown is equal to 81 tangent to the fourth theta. So now, first thing I did is I went ahead and factored out the 3 over 81 and called it 1 over 27. And then I simplified out my expression uh, of course, the tangent canceled out of the numerator with one of the tangents in the denominator, but I still had the integral of secant over tangent cubed, and this is not a pretty integral because you can't let u equal tangent theta because du would have to be secant squared theta d theta. I don't have a secant squared up there. So I know that this is not beneficial to keep in terms of secant and tangent. I go ahead and put it into terms of sines and cosines. So the secant is equal to 1 over cosine theta. And then I can say, well, I'm dividing by tangent cubed. If you're dividing by tangent cubed, you know that you're multiplying by the reciprocal of tangent cubed. So I went ahead and said here, uh, I'm going to multiply by cosine cubed over sine cubed. That's the same thing as cotangent cubed there. Okay. So I can see that that is going to help some because the cosine cubed cancels with the factor of cosine in the denominator to leave me cosine squared in the numerator. And then at this step, I can say, well, okay, it's still not great because I still can't use a u substitution. Uh, if I let u equal the sine of theta, du would be the cosine of theta d theta, not cosine squared. So I went ahead and used Pythagorean identity and said, well, cosine squared is equal to 1 minus sine squared theta. And then I was able to break apart my numerator and say, well, 1 over sine cubed, that's equal to cosecant cubed. And then minus the separate integral, and they both have the 1 over 27 in front of the integral, the second integral would be sine squared over uh, sine cubed. Well, that's going to be 1 over sine, which is just cosecant to the first. So now I have cosecant cubed theta, uh, or the integral of that, minus the integral of cosecant theta. So now what I did, and this is what they're wanting you to do in this section, is I went to my table of integrals. You have a cosecant cubed on your cosecant uh, on your cosecant table now there is a typo on your table in this case uh, they have mistakenly put an n here this n in 43 n should equal a 2 in this expression in order for it to be correct so the integral of cosecant cubed u is negative one half cosecant u cotangent u plus one half the natural log of cosecant u minus cotangent u plus c. So now, if you look at what I've done in this problem here, I said, okay, cosecant uh, cubed theta. 
That's going to be negative one half cosecant theta cotangent theta plus one half the natural log of the cosecant minus the cotangent. I just used that formula and I should have put here this is number 43 formula. And then I can say, well, this second part, uh, I actually used another formula there, the integral of the cosecant of u, that's number 14 on our table of integrals right here, that says that the integral of the cosecant of u is the natural log of the cosecant u minus cotangent u plus c. So in this step, I used formula 43 and number 14. Then I can say, okay, so that's where this last part came from. And then whenever I tried to simplify this out, the negative one half came out in front and multiplied this. Same thing with this one half to get the, uh, the, the oh, actually where the second term came from is I saw that I would have a plus 154th times the natural log of this uh, cosecant minus cotangent, but then that plus 154th gets eliminated by this minus 127th times that natural log. So all I did is I got a common denominator. I said the first one would be one over, uh, one over 54 positive. The second one's gonna be the same thing as minus two over 54 times that exact same natural log. So I combined these last two to get to this term, minus 154th, the natural log of the cosecant minus cotangent. So then after that, uh, I had to go and refer to my trig triangle, which remember, that just comes from your original substitution. So I knew that x over 3 had to be the secant of theta, which also tells me that the cosine of theta has to be 3 over x. So I know adjacent to theta is 3, the hypotenuse is x, which means your opposite height side has to be the square root of the hypotenuse squared minus the other leg squared. I go back to my problem. Cosecant, I already know cosecant's the reciprocal of sine. Sine would be the ratio of opposite over hypotenuse, so cosecant's hypotenuse over opposite. That's where that comes from. Cotangent, that's the ratio of adjacent over opposite, so you'd say three over that square root. And then you'll see I just have cosecant and cotangent again there. Now, extremely important here in these problems, I need to go ahead and simplify this down these two square roots multiply together just to give me the group x squared minus 9 in the denominator. I said 3 over 54 reduces down to 18, and I'll have a factor of negative x left in the numerator all by itself. The second one, uh, all I did here is I said, well, you have a common denominator, so you might as well keep that denominator and then just subtract out your numerators, x minus 3. And please do remember to leave that inside of an absolute value plus your constant of integration. At that point, you're done with 8. Uh, for number 9, uh, number 9 I did on the back of this sheet here, uh, you'll see a problem something like the integral of dx over x squared plus 16, let's say quantity cubed here. So if I'm trying to do this, I need to remember anytime it's x squared plus a squared, you're supposed to let x equal a tangent theta. So in this case, a is 4. Uh, and you can say, well, dx is just the derivative of that. Derivative of tangent is secant squared. So we get 4 secant squared theta d theta. Now I go up here and I go ahead and try to show what everything inside the integrand is before I plug it in. Well, x squared plus 16 cubed. That's going to be 16 tangent squared theta plus 16. Now, I know the inside of that would factor to be 16 times tangent squared plus 1. Tangent squared plus 1 is equal to secant squared. So now I have 16 secant squared theta quantity cubed. So I had to, and I did, go to my calculator to figure out what is 16 to the third power. 16 to the third power is 4,096. Secant squared raised to the third is secant to the sixth. So this is going to become the denominator of your integral expression. So I can say, okay, my integral expression, and I wish I would have labeled this i for the original integral. I'll do it right there. This original integral is going to equal, uh, our numerator is just dx, the four secant squared theta d theta over that denominator. 
And then I can say, well, okay, at this point, the 4 over 4096 comes out, and then I'll be left with the integral of the cosine to the fourth power of theta, d theta. And again, I didn't show it, but what I've done is I've used a table formula. Uh, your the online uh, achieve system really likes you to use the table formulas here so in this one I'm using a reduction formula for the cosine function this is the cosine to the fourth power uh, keep in mind you would have had a secant to the fourth in the denominator if you're dividing by secant to the fourth it's the same thing as multiplying by cosine to the fourth so I knew I had cosine to the fourth power in there and uh, my power reduction formula for that in this case, if you go to your table, doo -doo -doo -doo, let's see, the cosine. Let's see, cosine cubed. I know it's here somewhere, guys. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Where did that come from? It didn't just come out of thin air. I promise it's here. Let's see, cosecant. See, oh, there it is. Do 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 do. Sorry, took me a second. So the number forty-five. Uh, you'll see it's the cosine to the nth power of u. And then in order to do that, I can say, well, all right, if I have that. There, that makes it clear. Uh, the, the integral of the cosine to the nth power of u du, I can call that 1 over n. So if it's cosine to the fourth, it's going to be 1 fourth cosine to the third u sine u plus n minus 1. Well, in this case, n is 4, so this is going to be 3 over 4. And then you're going to have cosine to the second power. Once you have cosine to the second power, you could use your trig identities and say, well, that's equal to 1 plus the cosine of 2 theta, or you could come down here and say, well, there's an easier formula number 35 for the integral of cosine squared that just says it's equal to this. Same thing either way. But now, I'll go ahead and go back to my sheet here and say, all right, uh, if I'm looking at what I've done here, all I've done is this is formula number 45 where I said I'm going to use that power reduction formula to break this apart. When I did, I still had the integral of cosine squared theta d theta left in there. Myself, I would much rather just use the trig identity and say, well, cosine squared is equal to 1 plus the cosine of 2 theta uh, times 1 half. This 1 half comes out multiplies the 3 fourths, and I would get 3 over 8, but now that's being multiplied by the 1 over 1024, which is where this comes from. And then I can say, well, now the integral of 1 plus cosine 2 theta is going to be theta. And notice that's where this term right here comes from. I'm just leaving my first term alone. I'm just working this integral. All of this part's done. So I'll get 3 over 8192 times the integral of 1, which is theta. That's that term. The integral of the cosine of 2 theta is going to be the sine of 2 theta over 2. Again, it's multiplied by this coefficient of the integral, 3 over 8192. Now, the sine of 2 theta, you're not going to be able to use your trig triangle to simplify that. So I had to go in and, and understand, well, the sine of 2 theta, your double angle identity, is equal to 2 sine theta cosine theta. So what I've done from this step uh, to the evaluation is just say, well, I know that I'm going to have a sine theta cosine theta right here. The 2 is going to cancel with the 2 in the denominator that I got through the integration. Of course, plus your constant integration. Now in the evaluation portion, uh, I, I went to my trig triangle here that I constructed by saying, oh, I know x over 4 is equal to the tangent of theta. So if x over 4 is the tangent of theta, the opposite side is x, the adjacent side is 4, making your hypotenuse the square root of this side squared plus this side squared, x squared plus 16. Okay, so now, cosine cubed theta. Well, I can say that that's going to be the adjacent over the hypotenuse. I had 4 cubed over the hypotenuse. 
which instead of putting as the square root uh, to the third power, I just went ahead and said I'm going to have x squared plus 16 to the 3 over 2 power. Now, times the sine of theta, which is opposite over hypotenuse, and I said x over the, instead of the square root, I did the 1 half power. doesn't matter. You can use roots there. I move to the next term, 3 over 8,192 times theta. Well, here's your theta. Theta is going to equal the inverse tangent of x over 4, so that's where that came from. Now I have plus 3 over 8192, and please remember what I did with this. I had to use the double angle theorem and said, well, I really just have a sine theta cosine theta right there, no division of 2. So I have the 3,182 times sine theta, opposite over hypotenuse, times the cosine of theta, adjacent over hypotenuse. And you'll notice I just left the roots there instead of the 1 half power, plus the constant of integration. Now, when I try to simplify this out, my numerator here, I have 4 cubed, and that's divided by 4,096. That reduced down for me to 1 over 64. So I have a factor of 64 in my denominator. That's multiplying the group x squared plus 16 to the 3 over 2 plus 1 half power. So I, said, I just said, well, that group's just raised to the second power then. Your numerator, the only thing that's remaining up there in that first term is an x. You move to your second term, there's nothing to do in it. We're done with it. So that term's done. My next term, I know these two square roots multiply to give me the group x squared plus 16 to the first. I went ahead and said, well, 4 will go into 8,192 and reduce it down to 2,048 in the numerator and then my numer in my denominator. And then my numerator is just going to be the 3x term plus your constant of integration. That is your final answer for this integral problem. And I know what you're thinking. Hey, that one's kind of pretty. Uh, I kind of like it too. Uh, if I'm looking at the next problem here, we've done 8, we've done 9, uh, let's see, where did I put 10, guys? Here we go. So 10 is actually the shortest one of this bunch, and that's because once you get it set up, the integration process is super easy. So you're going to have something like dx over the group 121 minus x squared raised to the 3 over 2 power. So anytime you see a squared minus x squared, you're supposed to remember to let x equal a sine of theta. Well, in this case, you know that a is going to be the square root of 121, which is 11. So I'm going to say x is equal to 11 sine theta. Well, dx, derivative of 11 sine theta, is 11 cosine theta d theta. Now I go back into my problem and I can say, well, think about what that 121 minus x squared to the 3 over 2 is equal to. Once you plug in the 11 sine of theta in for x, you'd say, well, that's going to be 121 minus 121 sine squared theta. You could factor out 121 in that group and you'd be left with 1 minus sine squared, which we know is cosine squared. So now I can say, well, the inside portion is 121 cosine squared. I now need to raise that to the 3 over 2 power. Cosine squared to the 3 over 2 power is easy. You just say power times power, you're going to get cosine cubed. The 121, you're really saying, well, it's the square root of 121, which is 11, but then it's 11 cubed. 11 cubed, 1,331. So, I get what my denominator is equal to. I go back to my integration problem and I plug that in my denominator. Now my numerator dx, that's my 11 cosine theta d theta. 11 over 1,331 allowed me to factor out a 1 over 121. And then here's the beautiful part. Notice cosine over cosine cubed, that would reduce down to 1 over cosine squared. It's not in your benefit to leave it like that though because it's a lot more obvious what to do if you'll call 1 over cosine squared the same thing as secant squared. And then it's like playing Jeopardy with it. You say, what did we take the derivative of in calc 1 to get a secant squared? And you know, well, hey, derivative of tangent is secant squared. So the integral of secant squared is nothing more than the tangent of theta. So that came straight off and then plus the constant of integration. I needed to get my answer in terms of theta back in terms of x. 
So I introduce my trig triangle again, and I can say I know that the sine of theta is equal to x over 11, uh, opposite over hypotenuse, which means that your uh, adjacent side down here had to be the square root of your hypotenuse squared minus the other leg squared. And again, remember, the expression from the original problem always has to pop up in your trig triangle, and it always should. Uh, now, uh, when I go into plugging this in, I'll have 1 over 121 times the tangent of theta. Tangent, opposite over adjacent, x over the square root of 121 minus x squared. I just cleaned that up a little bit and said it looks better to call it x over 121 on that root of 121 minus x squared plus your constant integration. Those are some gorgeous problems there. Hope this helps you out with these uh, trig, trig substitution problems in 7.3.